Regenerative is essentially about working the way life works, attuning ourselves with nature. It was Gregory Bateson, the systems theorist, who once said that the source of all of our problems today stem from the gap between the way we think and how nature works. And what regenerative architecture does is help close that gap by shifting from the mechanistic mindset into a regenerative mindset. Humanity is facing its largest macro change program the world has ever seen, halving emissions by 2030, reducing nature loss, increasing prosperity whilst reducing inequality, all whilst dealing with mental health and well-being issues all over the world. No neighbourhood is spared. Peter Drucker, the management guru, once famously said that in times of turmoil, the danger lies not in the turmoil itself, but in facing it with yesterday's logic. And that is so true. So often we feel the challenge is all this volatility when it's not. The real challenge is getting caught up in a yesterday's logic, this mechanistic, control-based, narrowing down, linear tendency. Rather than shifting into tapping into how our regenerative neighbourhoods really work, sensing into the multiple and myriad nested systems and the richness of relationships that weaves them together. There are three types of systems within our neighbourhoods, the technical, the social and the ecological. The technical is the flows of products and services and manufacturing and information flows that our economics rely upon. And we can map those out and understand the feedback loops and relationships between them. And then there's the social the rich human relationships that weave the working and play life and leisure life together, the meeting spots, uh, the pop-up shops, the conventions, the theatres, the galleries, all of this goes to informing the richness of relationships and we can map those out and understand the feedback loops and relationships. And then there's also the ecological, the watersheds, the atmospheric cycles, the way in which animals migrate and interrelate insects and birds, the keystone species, and also the soil cycles. And again, that can be mapped out and we can understand those interrelationships. And in our neighbourhoods, all of those systems are interrelating together to form this richness of relationships that we can learn to listen into, to sense into. It's important that we bring ourselves into the system. This is the sh difference between systems thinking when we map the system out there to actually systemic awareness. When we bring ourselves under the skin of the system, we start to participate and listen into how the system dynamics unfold. And a powerful tool I've found that enables this is systemic enablers, what I call systemic enablers where we gather a diverse group of people from across the system, diverse actors, people that perhaps are working for the council, for local offices, uh, community leaders, uh, people who own pop-up shops, all sorts of different people we bring together in circles of dialogue. And we engage in generative dialogue so we can all listen and share and empathise with different parts of the system. This th then gives us a really rich picture of how the system is emerging. What are the patterns? What are the principles? And then we can start to sense into the future. We can come up with scenarios of the desired future states that we wish for, and we can involve those actors in it so they feel involved and bought into these desired futures. While it's important to engage these diverse actors in unlocking the future, because that emancipates people. It frees people up from the status quo to dare to dream. And it brings in all sorts of ideas and also gains buy-in uh, from the system. It's also important to not then superimpose these future scenarios onto the system. 
Instead, we need to engage through what I call demonstrators or live labs, where we start to work with these diverse actors and start prototyping designs from the future and bring them into the present day. And then using those systemic enablers, we listen to how the system is responding to these changes. Are there un any unintended consequences? What's happening as a result? What are the knock-on effects, the feedbacks and so forth? So we then use the systemic enablers to constantly listen to these prototypes as we start to emerge the future. That way we can tune into the evolutionary and emergent dynamics of the neighbourhood. The time has come. This is humanity's hour of reckoning. And we have the choice either to adapt and evolve our thinking so that we can more tune in to how the neighbourhoods really work and open ourselves up to those systems. Or we can hold back, getting caught up in yesterday's thinking, a machine logic, control-based logic, which actually created our manifold problems in the first place. And so as architects, the challenge for us is to consciously work with the grain of nature rather than against it.